Today's video is going to be the ultimate guide to motion blur inside of DaVinci Resolve and Fusion. We're going to be going over how to add motion blur to Fusion graphics and to any video using both the free version and the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Let's get right into it with the first method which is adding motion blur to Fusion graphics. Inside of DaVinci Resolve here I just have this simple animation that I made and I want to add motion blur to it because it makes it look way better. So first we need to go over to the Fusion page. From there I'm going to enter the text node which is the first node that I want to add motion blur to. After selecting it, come up to the inspector, then go over to the settings tab, and then you can check the box that says motion blur. Checking it reveals four more controls that allows me to change how the motion blur looks. First up is quality, which is pretty self-explanatory. Basically it adjusts the quality of the motion blur by adding more or less samples. This control can really slow your computer down, so make sure you don't set it too high, but also make sure you set it high enough that you don't see all these different samples uh, inside of your final video. So I'm going to bring my quality up until I can no longer see those individual steps. For this shot, 10 is good. I typically set mine between 10 and 30, 10 usually being the minimum. Alright, next up we have shutter angle, which is basically the intensity of the motion blur. Shutter angle is another form of shutter speed, which is found in most cameras. 180 degrees in shutter angle is equivalent to double your frame rate in shutter speed. 360 degrees is equal to your frame rate, and 75 degrees is equal to three times your frame rate. So basically, the higher the shutter angle, the more motion blur you're going to have. Usually I just leave mine set to 180. On to the center bias. The center bias adjusts the center point of the motion blur. It's pretty much pivot point for motion blur. You can get some kind of cool results with this, but personally I have never used this in a project, but it is there if you need it. And then finally we have sample spread, which adjusts the brightness of all of the different samples added by the quality. Again, this is not a control that I use at all. I'm going to go ahead and add the motion blur to this rectangle by doing the exact same thing. Inside of the rectangle, I can check motion blur and bring the quality up to 10, which is the same thing that it was at on my text node. Now, when working in a big fusion composition, motion blur can really slow it down. So if you want to preview it without motion blur, you can just right click on the playback bar here and uncheck motion blur. So from now on, it will render the entire thing without any motion blur. This is a really useful feature that has saved me a ton of time. But the best part is, is if we go back to the edit page, motion blur has automatically been re-enabled. So if you forget to uncheck that in Fusion, it's no big deal, it'll show up in your final render. If you guys are into making motion graphics inside of Fusion, check out my Motion Essentials plugin at the link below, and use the code down there for 20% off. Now onto the second way to do motion blur in DaVinci Resolve. This one allows you to do it to videos. It's really easy to do, but it requires the studio version to do. Alright, but first we need to go over to the color page, and then come down to the motion effects tab right here. We have this category in here called motion blur and there's three different controls. Number one is the estimation type. So I like to set this to better as it seems to give me the best result. Then I like to come down to the motion blur and set the motion blur to something I like. I'll usually preview it there and as you can see that is way too much. So I'll drag it down maybe something around like 25 that looks a lot better. Maybe even just a little more. Let's do 30. Alright, but then what I do is I find a spot that has quite a bit of motion in it, like let's say right here. Alright, and then I come to the motion range and I set it to whichever one looks best. So in this case, I think that large is giving me the best result. Now, this thing is not perfect at all. If you look at the light pole in the background here, you see that it has motion blur applied to it as well. But when playing back in real time, not many people will notice it. All right, so now onto the third method using Fusion. So let's go over to the Fusion page. And in order to do this, we're going to need to add two nodes. First up, do shift space and add in the optical flow node. And second, add in the vector motion blur node. Now, keep in mind that this will use a lot of processing power and increase your render times. Alright, so the media in will need to go into the optical flow node, and then the optical flow node needs to go into the vector motion blur. The optical flow node is the node that really slows down the process. But once you've set it up like that, all you need to do is go to a frame that has a quite a bit of motion in it, and then come over to the scale and just adjust this to adjust the amount of motion blur in your scene. I'm going to set mine to about 1.34. And now if I go back to the edit page here, it'll take a little while to make a cache, and if it's not doing that, what you can do is right click and do render in place. Then set this to like mp4 and click render. You'll have to choose a location to save it to, and then once you click render, it'll create an mp4 version of it that'll play back in real time. Well that's it for the ultimate guide to motion blur in DaVinci Resolve. If you guys want to check out more of my content, here's a video YouTube thinks that you guys will like to watch. And you can also check out my Fusion playlist, which has a ton of Fusion tutorials that'll help you improve your skills. Make sure to leave a like and drop a comment down below letting me know which method you use the most. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.